What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're covering my top tips and tricks that I wish I knew sooner in V Rising. So these are all things that I jotted down as I was playing through the game for the very first time, and it's full of those kind of like aha moments or mistakes that I made, and I wanted to share those with you guys so you can avoid them. So let's get this whole thing kicked off with some things I wish I knew sooner about my castle. So first up, Mist Braziers. These are absolutely critical early on. So when you first start out, you won't have a roof on your castle because it's not a castle. It's just a wooden box with some gates. And because of that, the sun is just going to beat you to death unless you have a brazier going or if you're in your coffin. So for the first few in-game days, when the sun came up, I was just in my coffin. Like I just went and got in my coffin so I didn't die. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, this game made a terrible design decision. This is awful. But in reality, I just hadn't explored all of my crafting options. I found the braziers. I placed a few around my fort. Now these items will turn bones into shade. So that way you can safely work on things inside your fort without worrying about the sun. Now, please keep in mind, they do have a limited range. So you may need to place one or two, maybe even three of them, depending on how big your fort is. So I mentioned not having a roof. So this one was a little confusing to me at first because the game doesn't really tell you how to add a roof until later on but it's great info to know early. That way you know what you're shooting for. So in order to add a roof, you need to have four castle walls, not palisades, not wooden walls, but actual castle walls and flooring installed. So once you have a completely enclosed area with flooring, a roof will be automatically added and you can safely shut off your brazier and get back to work. So next is a very high priority item for PVP servers. Make sure to close off your fort. This needs to be a number one priority. You need four walls and a gate set up as soon as possible if you want to protect yourself and your stuff against other players. Because if you don't do this, you'll have a whole like side of walls missing. And then players can just walk into your fort and then loot all your stuff. So that's not a great way to start your V Rising experience. Now, for PvE, it's not as worrisome, but still, it's going to keep wildlife and patrolling enemies out. Now, side note, also make sure to close your actual fort doors. There's no magical barrier that goes up blocking entrance. If you don't close those doors and you log off, you can be killed. I was at my sawmill. I was waiting for some planks. I logged out. When I logged back in, I was dead and lost all my stuff because a wolf had come through my open doors and killed me, which was super embarrassing. But this is something that can happen. So please understand that as you're playing. Now for our next item, it's a little trick that's going to help with the limited storage that you have early on. So when you first start, you're going to have a small chest that only has a few spaces to store things, which is not ideal for a survival game. You're going to be gathering a ton of crafting materials. So what I ended up doing was using my crafting stations as temporary storage. You can place anything in these. And as long as they aren't the materials that the station consumes, it won't do anything to them. So I was able to store all of my extra stuff in my sawmill while placing lumber in there at the same time in order to craft planks. It was a really nice break until you can craft some more large storage boxes. So one of those type of things like think smarter, not harder type of deal. Now, next up is something the game doesn't immediately make obvious, and that's bonuses for crafting stations if you have certain flooring installed. So in your castle, you can create rooms to house your crafting stations. Then you can install different flooring, things like forge flooring, workshop flooring, alchemy flooring. And if you match the flooring to the station, so alchemy flooring to your alchemy table, you can get some really big bonuses. Things like reducing the crafting time by 25% and reducing the crafting cost by 25%. And these are just huge in the long run, and they're gonna let you stretch your materials a little further each time, which believe me, every time you go out and gather a full inventory of materials to come back and have them just eaten up by your crafting stations, believe me, this is an absolute godsend. So our next tip is for all of our PVP players out there. So if you're on a PVP server, you need to create a vampire lockbox as soon as possible. This is a special storage container that is only accessible by you. Other vampire players cannot loot it and it will help protect whatever you put in there. And this is really cool because if another player breaches your castle, they're gonna be able to loot all of your storage boxes. This one, however, the vampiric lockbox is safe. So make sure to put all of your most precious and most expensive uh, coveted materials in there. So our next item is a different one. So in V Rising, there is a button called compulsively count. Now this is great. So this allows you to take like items and automatically store them or submit them to your crafting stations. Now this is one of those things that's right in front of you, but it never kind of dawns on you to use. It just 
you just have to click it and just remember it one time. But instead of right clicking on each stack of materials to place them in your crafting station, you can just place one stack and then click compulsively count and it'll submit all of them in there automatically. So this is one of those things that's just, it's great. It works for storage. It works for crafting stations. It works for all kinds of stuff. So make sure to take advantage of this thing and don't waste clicks and don't waste time. Okay, so that wraps up all of the castle and crafting tips and tricks. Let's get into some more of the miscellaneous stuff that was super helpful. And we're gonna get this section started off with blood quality. So when it comes to feeding on enemies in game, they'll have different qualities of blood. And the better the quality, the more benefits you get from them. So for instance, if you have a 5% rogue blood that you consume, you're gonna get a very small increase to crit chance. But if you have a 100% rogue blood, you're going to get increased crit chance, increased movement speed, reduced cooldown on your dodge skill, plus a 100% crit chance after you dodge, a 50% increased chance to expose armor, which increases damage taken on enemies. And then all of these effects are boosted by another 30% if you manage to get a 100% rogue blood. So as you can see, there is an obvious difference when it comes to blood quality. Higher is always better, but here's the deal, right? That blood does not last forever. It's not like you feed on it once and it's there. And there are different types of blood out there as well. You have creature blood, brute, warrior, rogue, etc. And each one is going to give you different bonuses. So making sure to choose the right one and finding a high quality one is key for tackling harder content. So the next thing I want to talk about is gear. So some sets will have set bonuses for equipping two and four pieces that match. Now these are pretty powerful. They give some really nice boost to your character, including raising your gear score, which then helps you take on harder bosses. So you wanna be sure to weigh these before ditching them for another piece of gear. However, with that being said, most of the time, the increase to gear score and the extra stats that come with that are enough to compensate, but it's just something to keep an eye out for. Now, when it comes to harvesting materials, your weapons double as harvesting tools. And unless you read them, you might not know that they do give bonuses if you match the right tool for the job. So for instance, I used a sword to harvest some copper ore and I received less materials per swing than if I used my hammer. So be sure to use your sword for vegetation, your ax for trees, your hammer for ore, and lastly, your spear for creatures. Because if you don't, you're gonna be leaving resources on the table. And in the case of the spear, you're gonna be dealing 25% less damage. Now, if you watch my previous video, you know that I recommend getting the alpha wolf blood first because you get a nice 45% movement speed buff. And this is insane early on because it just helps you travel further during the night. You can make it back to your base a little bit quicker, especially during the day. But with all of that being said, getting a horse is still a much much better option. These things give, I think, 100% increased movement speed and you can attack from them. So I recommend once you defeat the Feywalker, head up to Dunley Farms, mount a horse. Once you hop on, open your inventory. You'll be able to view your horse's inventory. You can feed them canteens of water, which is going to help keep them fed. And if you click in the upper right-hand corner, you can actually name them, which again, I highly recommend naming them because if you don't name the horse, then it's going to look like just a generic horse that doesn't have an owner. And that's when people will end up taking it. So go out there, get a horse, name it and enjoy it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is from a planning perspective. So nights and days are short in V rising. So you want to make sure to take advantage of the full night, right? This is going to be monumental for your success. If you don't have a game plan, you're going to waste time. And you're going to waste opportunities to improve your castle and your character. So I would recommend make a plan for each night in the game and how you want to spend it. Do you want to go farm bandit camps for drops? Do you want to fight a boss? Do you want to go out and harvest materials? What do you want to accomplish? Make a plan and execute. Now, part two of this is planning. So some bosses are just, they're, they're beasts. I mean, they're just big bosses with super thick health bars and it takes a while to whittle them down. And in the case of other bosses, you're not going to have any shade to fight in if the sun comes up. So you want to make sure to maximize the entire nighttime to fight. And in order to do that, you're going to have to travel during the day and then wait at some spot near the boss until it flips to nighttime. And then you have the full 12 hours or so to go out and actually fight the boss. Cause if you don't, you're going to shortchange yourself and it's not, it's not going to be pretty. So next one, very quick note here, 
this is resources. So when you die, you're going to drop everything that is a resource in your inventory. It doesn't matter if you're on a PVP server, a PVE server, you're going to drop all of your stuff except for your weapons. So you want to head back to your body. You can recover them. However, this does have a time limit. So I'm not sure what the time limit is. I just know when I died um, and I had logged out, and log back in the next morning. So it was about an eight hour break. All my stuff was gone and I couldn't recover it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's talk about our last three topics. These are quick, but they're very impactful. So one, in V Rising, you're gonna have a currency called silver. Now, silver is toxic to vampires. And because of that, when you loot silver coins, you're gonna receive a damage over time debuff. This is going to prevent you from shape-shifting, so please keep that in mind when you carry them. You're not going to be able to switch into your wolf form to travel more quickly. Instead, you're going to have to either mount a horse, or you're going to have to run on your own two feet all the way back to your base to drop them off. Now, another precious resource in the game are called Unsullied Hearts. Now, you can consume these to refill your blood, but please do not do that. Do not waste these rare items on something simple like this, because you're going to need them to uh, do some future crafting recipes and some more intense stuff. Now, I made the mistake of eating like five of them. Then I had to go and farm more and it put me behind and it took forever to actually get these things to drop. I believe they dropped from elite enemies or rare enemies. But again, it just, it was one of those things where, you know, you kind of like face palm because I can't believe I used these super rare things for such a simple purpose. Now, the very last tip is actually a farming route for you guys. You guys started. So at a certain point in the game, you're going to need to find recipes in the world to increase your gear score. So Night Stalker is the final tier given at the start of the game for free from the actual crafting table. Everything else you need to unlock. So from here, you're going to have to find merciless drops from bandits in order to craft new sets of gear. That way you can increase your gear score all the way up until you reach the Bandit King. And then at that point, you're going to unlock the next tier of armor. But the problem is doing this with just your basic Night Stalker gear is going to be tough. So farming Merciless is highly recommended. I'm going to put a farming video out, just a quick kind of, hey, here's what I do. Here's the areas I go to. But guys, that is it. Those are 19 things that I wish I knew sooner in V Rising. This game has so many little kind of intricacies that'll trip you up if you don't pay attention. So hopefully this helps, but I want to hear from you all. If you have something that you wish you knew sooner after starting, please leave a comment below to help your fellow vampires out. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, this has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.